Texans edge out the Broncos, but they lose Tank Dell for the season. The Will Anderson game has arrived, and the final stretch is upon us. Let's do this week's highlight reaction, week 13 edition, inside the locker room. Yeah. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. Locker room. Yeah, we in the locker room. Texans win another close one. They show that they can win in different ways, but they lose one of their most important pieces. It is the locker room, number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 Central Sports Radio 610. And the Odyssey app. You can see me right here in the locker room. Number one source for Texans daily digital content. Uh, we're, we're pushing on 15 months now. Uh, and we've been giving you the best digital content, the best pulse of what's going on. Be sure to subscribe, like, ride along. Whether you're a Texans fan or not, uh, this is the p- best place to get the pulse uh, for what's going on. And let's get into this uh, highlight reaction in a second. Um, but before that, uh, biggest takeaways from Sunday. The, the most relevant takeaways from the game on Sunday against the Denver Broncos, the 22-17 uh, to 17 win. Um, I have fought six and, and there are five and there could be, there could be more, um, sprinkled in, uh, throughout the, uh, the highlight reaction. Although this is not a film study. I, I know there's a lot of like film watching and clipping and stuff like that. Uh, I, I, I respect what goes into that. So I'm not really, uh, in that field. I think there's a lot of people kind of, um, faking it a little bit as, as I've said, from the very beginning. This is not a film study. This is a reaction to highlights, talking points, et cetera, to kind of get the brain flowing on the Monday after because you have different thoughts uh, when it comes to immediately after the game and Monday. Thought number one, though, life without Tank Dell moving forward. I don't know what this looks like. I think there's a lot of possibilities. It would be nice if the offensive line could run block. Uh, That's kind of an issue. Uh, Starting to wonder how good the pass blocking is. Uh, Inability to run the ball. Um, do they find some ways to get creative, perhaps using the running backs in the past game? Uh, does that mean maybe we see more Mike Boone? Um, are we going to see more two tight end stuff when Dalton Schultz comes back with Brevin Jordan? Brevin Jordan kind of had uh, a pretty decent showing yesterday. Um, do we see Mechie, uh, more opportunities for Mechie? Could we see more Hutchinson? Uh, there's a lot of questions. I, I do think we see more Hutchinson. I do think Mechie gets more opportunities. Him and CJ damn near had a touchdown at the end of the first half. But life without Tank Dell moving forward uh, is the biggest takeaway there. Arguably your, your best weapon. You lose him for the season. Things kind of change, although Nico Collins – did step up. Takeaway number two, uh, we had the uh, the Will Anderson game. I wondered if we were going to get the Will Anderson game. We got that, and and naturally, you start to get greedy and wonder, is this just the start of many things to come? Bad quarterbacks get sacked. Bad quarterbacks get sacked, and, and Will Anderson's going to have his opportunity to face some bad quarterbacks uh, in the final five weeks of the season. Will Levis or Ryan Tannehill twice. Uh, Gardner Minshew, who's playing very well, he's not a bad quarterback. Uh, I, Joe Flacco is not a bad quarterback, but let's be honest, this is kind of the ghost of Joe Flacco, and he's not very mobile. And then who knows what the hell the Jets are going to do? Are they going to go Tim Boyle? Uh, what what the hell are they going to do? So the Will Anderson game, uh, big takeaway. Are we going to get some more of that? Because that was an elite performance by him. Uh, elite. Speaking of elite, elite looking Derek Stingley. <clears throat> Four interceptions in the last three weeks. Um Bailed out Jalen Petrie big time on the second one. Uh, first one, little help from Will Anderson that may have actually made the interception more difficult. Uh, they don't win this game without Derek Stingley. And Derek Stingley, if if we start looking at Derek Stingley uh, as an elite corner, that changes the entire dynamic uh, of this squad. Obviously, health is still a big thing. But even then, just the fact that you know he's going to play like this when he comes back, uh, that's very encouraging. And, oh, by the way, he gets uh, that sauce Stingley uh, matchup this week thought number four nico collins plays like the guy uh, as soon as tank dell went down you had the 58 yard pass to nico collins he had 150 yards between three catches uh, nico collins plays like the guy and it's going to be interesting to see how teams handle him uh now that they don't have to worry about tank dell is there going to be a little more press coverage um and is he going to be able to do this uh you would think 
you know, the way that he's playing nine yards away from a thousand, I think I saw storm reports say, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Nico handles it, but he's the guy. And and the last one, we've been talking about this for years. Uh, the offensive line is this offensive line starting to kind of show some, uh, vulnerability, uh, not just in the run game, but in the pass game, CJ Stroud sacked five times. A lot of these, (laughs) these were not holding the ball too long. This was, you know, and a lot of it wasn't the offensive line. It seemed like there was like some miscommunication, uh, maybe between the back or O line or whatever. But um, the O line, something to keep an eye on. Let's get into the highlight reaction again. This is not a film study. This is a reaction to the highlights, the talking points uh, here in the locker room. Um, we're going to start right off the top. Uh, Broncos with the ball, uh, twelve fifty four. Uh, remain this is a third and 10 Texans forced to punt uh, on their first drive Uh, CJ Stroud uh, attempted to scramble and and it looks like we're going to get perhaps the uh, same thing here yes Russell Wilson short Uh, Broncos got a cut uh, got a punt as well so you had CJ having to scramble and then punt and then you had Russell Wilson 12 14 uh, here uh, in the uh, first quarter CJ in the shotgun. This was uh, Brevin Jordan right off the top. Um, they get him involved, goes out of bounds at the sidelines. He said he was so close to not uh, going out of bounds, said he wasn't even nervous. And then you have this play. And this one, I don't know how y'all feel about this. Um, a lot of people, there, there were a lot of different reactions in the press box. Um, you know, why are you throwing to Andrew Beck? And why aren't they running the ball? I had no problem with the play call. I think the play call was perfect. I mean, you look at this. Everyone's moving. Beck is selling it perfectly. Um, He's wide open. Like, look at all this field right here. He's wide open. I mean, either he's got to keep running, he's got to go up with two. I mean, it's a little bit high. Does he need to cut it up? I don't know. There's probably some NFL fullback slash tight ends that make that catch, but I thought the play call was fine, whether it's the throw, whether it's the, the inability to catch the rock. I had no problem with the play call. Uh, settling for three here on fourth and one interesting decision by Bobby Slowick, but I guess when you can't or don't feel you can move the ball, then that's fine. Will Anderson right there, sack right off the top, hit Russell Wilson on the first play. Uh, then he gets the sack of Russell Wilson, actually forced a shank punt, uh, and the Texans get the rock right back. CJ Stroud, uh, over the top, little Nico action right there. Uh, Nico flexing on him. Yeah, my Michigan Wolverines are in the playoff. Uh, and then we have the uh, the fourth and inches. Uh, CJ moves the pile. Uh, then we're gonna we're gonna ha- be in this situation again uh, pretty soon. Uh, first and ten, pitch to Damian Pierce, who the, the coaching staff clearly likes more than Singletary at this point. Don't ask me why, but they do. Uh, second and goal, handoff to Pierce, uh, and this is. A costly touchdown because Tank Dell down uh, on the play. Uh, I guess they skipped the uh, the fourth and two C.J. Stroud penalty, but you you could see this. You immediately knew something serious had happened. Uh, Tank Dell carted off the field uh, out for the season. You can see Broncos players, Texans players coming over. Uh, the respect there. Uh, so the Texans take a 10-0 lead, and it kind of takes a backseat to uh, Tank Dell being lost for the season, as C.J. put it. Uh, one of their brothers first quarter, third and three or yeah, still first quarter, third and three, uh, Russell Wilson, again, Jerry Hughes with the pressure, uh, earlier this week, by the way, Russell Wilson said that he wants to play into his forties. Someone that loves him needs to tell him that that's not a good idea. I mean, I, I, I kind of rolled my eyes at the notion that Russell's playing like some elite ball. He's okay. He's an okay game manager. He's not as fast as he once was. He's not as accurate as he once was. Like, he's not Tom Brady. He's not Drew Brees at this point. Like, he's not playing at that high of a level. Um, he's done a good job saving face uh, in it, at this point. But the notion that this guy's going to play into his 40s, like someone, someone that loves him needs to talk to him and tell him that's a bad idea. Um, third and six, CJ going back again. Nico Collins right after Tank Dell goes down. It's, it's next man up. D'Amico Ryans has stressed that for a while. Uh, right right afterwards, you saw how sad the players were. I mean, they rally. They're going out there, still doing their thing. Uh, third and six, more pressure. 
Not sure whose fault that is. Uh, Amendola, once again, 38. I guess you feel okay about this. Uh, he didn't miss a field goal today. Uh, hell of a – don't know what the future holds for him, but a, but a nice ball game for him. Nice recovery from last week. A little bit of the run game for Denver. Thought, thought we would maybe see a little bit more of this. Um, but the Texans held up decently uh, today against that third and five. This was crazy to me. It's third and five near midfield. Like you, you remember the R let Russ cook move uh, movement. I mean, this is third and five right here, and they're just handing off, and they're walking right off the damn field. I mean, that's not like that was four down territory or anything. They're walking right off the field. They're punting right back to the Texans. Thirteen nothing. CJ. There's Brevin Jordan again. Truck, get off me. Right to the sidelines. You can see the teammates getting fired up. This team seems to like each other. Brevin Jordan, D'Amico fired up for him. I, I do wonder if we're going to see some more of that two tight end uh, with Brevin and uh, Schultz uh, in order to fill the, the tank void. Now, that's that's not the best blocking, but, I mean, you got to find some way to replace that, especially if you can't run the rock. So maybe you got to get a little bit creative. Um, Damian Pierce up the middle. First and 25. I mean, this is kind of one of those caught the defense sleeping kind of runs. And this was the, the, the largest chunk of Damian Pierce's uh, yardage right there, the 23 yards on first and 25. However, they don't throw it again uh, near interception there. That, that, that's P.J. Locke, though. I'm familiar with his work. Uh, very physical, but not really a guy you want in coverage. Uh, screen passes, kind of been a weak point for the Texans along with uh, – Tight end production, uh, still 13 zip. Russell with the zone read. Again, look how slow he is compared to what he once was. Kind of gets out of bounds. Not kind of does. Another pressure by Will Anderson. Good job by Russ getting it away. Fourth down here, 349 remaining. Sean Payton deciding to go for it. Russ using his legs, boom, stumbles forward. And at this point, D'Amico is thinking about using his timeouts, which I think is interesting. Texans have been really good at stealing uh, points at the end of the second quarter. You can see D'Amico's already used two timeouts here. Uh, third and six, Will Anderson again. Look at that. That could have been another set. We could have been talking about a hat trick there. Throw away. Notice D'Amico uses the two timeouts. He's given the Texans an opportunity to steal some points. Broncos got to settle for three. Lutz, 13-3. So you got the 10-point lead. Um, this one, this one, this one hurt. Get, you got to think the game could have been close to over uh, on this one. C.J. Stroud rolls out, finds Nico. Nico gets down. Close to the uh, close to field goal territory. Another sideways pass. This is in the, on the third quarter. Um, before that, though, they didn't show it. Uh, the missed Mechie pass. Mechie that that would have made it twenty to three heading into half. I think it would have been a fifty-eight, fifty-six yard touchdown. Uh, they don't score that, but but the Texans get the rock after Denver does nothing. Another settle for three though. So you still have a two possession game, sixteen to three. Uh, the Mechie play, I don't, they don't, they don't show the, um, those types of plays like the match play, et cetera. They don't go as in depth, um, on NFL, uh, chain mover there for the Broncos, 16, three kind of desperate territory. You, you knew eventually they were going to try to take advantage of Jalen Petrie in coverage. Uh, and here it is. Russell Wilson, still such a pretty deep ball. Uh, Petrie grabs him, couldn't hold on to him. I mean, this is the weekly, it's going to happen. Uh, he's just – he's very, very, very limited in coverage, Jalen Petrie, and they picked on him. So there you go, Cortland Sutton feeling himself, pointing up, 16-10. And at this point in the stadium, you could feel the uh, the let's go Broncos uh, chance. This was a frustrating stretch for me for the Texans. So you get sacked on first, uh, and then on second you do whatever. Third and 13 – the play clock goes down to one, and D'Amico Ryans kills a timeout to make it third to keep it at third and thirteen instead of third and eighteen. 
Last week, you kicked a 58-yard field goal instead of going for it on 4th and 12. Bobby Slowick himself talked about how much of a long shot that was. The value of these things down here, these things right here, these lines, these tied, these uh, these timeouts, it's more valuable than five minutes. So third and 18, if you just have to charge it to the game, that's fine. I did not like D'Amico Ryan's using a timeout here. And I can't wait for the day when coaches realize that with all this analytic study, killing timeouts to save five yards, not all the time, but most of the time, it's not worth it. This is a fumble. This was huge. I mean, look at this football right here. And look at Dare right here. Dare uh, Agunbo, Agunbowale. You're going to see him right here. This football is right here. You have one, two, three, four Broncos closest to it, including three right there in the pile. Watch the hustle by Dare. He falls on it. That would have been Broncos, Broncos ball, damn near the red zone. The entire state, not the entire stadium, but all the Broncos fans are chanting, let's go Broncos. And Dare, again, look at this one more time. Ball's out. Look at it. It's rolling over here. 99 has a shot at it. Look at this. He's, fo he's following it. He jumps on it. Comes loose. Five guys there, and Dare comes from there and gets it. That was a huge play. That's an underrated play. We've seen Dare make field goals. We've seen him make special teams tackles. That's a big play by Dare. That's up there with the George Fant tackle uh, against Arizona that saved the uh, pick six that would have given the Cardinals the lead. I mean, that's just massive. PJ trying to say he has it after the fact. So Texans 16-10. Uh, they end up at least giving Denver position. And then right there, Denver still has the momentum. Will Anderson tip. Derek Stingley interception. Third straight week with an interception. Put some tape on that ball. Label it. I want to keep that one. 16-10. Three's fine. Brevin Jordan again. First down inside the 10. Again, here, you think three's fine. No big deal. Take it into the fourth quarter. Texans on top, 16-10. CJ to Pierce. Inside the three. They love them some Pierce, don't they? Second and goal. Little booty action. It's right there, Nico. Wide ass open. Have you a day, man. Have you a day. 22 to 10, going for two here, uh, which is fine. A little fake. Interception, good tackle by uh, Brevin Jordan, trips him up. So they don't cut it to 10 there. But they aren't going away. You're still letting them kind of hang around the two-possession game. And there's many plays that would have changed that. They didn't even show the Desmond King one. Uh, the Desmond King, the worst call maybe of the season. Um, they didn't show the Desmond King. They didn't show the Mechie. This probably shouldn't have been as close as it was. This is Judy, right? Yeah. It's right over the top. Des got cut up a little bit. Um, it's all good, though. He's getting most of the nickel action, but that's that happens, and Russ gets this touchdown. We got 17 to 22 game. And this is just a jailbreak. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what to say about that. They just didn't even notice him. And I'm sure Slowick will talk about who that's who that's on, but they gotta they gotta fix that. Watch this play. This is this is incredible by Stingley. So we talked about Jalen Petrie in the coverage. Um I want you to watch Petrie here because I was watching him this whole play because I said they're they're trying to find Petrie. So watch watch Sutton. Sutton's going to come from right here. He's just running right here up the seam. He's going to run. He's going to run to the inside and he's going to take off. And Stingley's running with him too. Stingley's already retreating down here. Look at that. Look at Petrie bite. Watch Petrie bite here. Boom. <laughs> no man's land. He's already behind you. And look at Stingley. Stingley's having to make up some ground. We've already talked about how good of a deep ball Russell throws. Uh, Stingley's already, try already having to make up some ground. 
Boom. Not too many guys make that play. Very few. And Jalen Petrie, you are very lucky. Let's watch that one more time. That was so pretty. Let's watch Stingley the whole time on this. We've talked about Petrie. Let's let's focus on the positive as Lovey Smith used. Let's focus on the positive. Let's watch Derek Stingley. By the way, Lovey Smith used Derek Stingley <laughs> very badly. But watch Stingley down here. He's running. Running. Boom. Go right down. Let's go celebrate again. Two picks. That's four in three weeks. At least one with three straight. So now you have a chance. Uh, the Texans up five. Figure something out. CJ, dump down to Mechie. Lower that shoulder. Third and one. We know they suck at third and one. CJ again. Love having the QB sneak in the bag. However, the NFL sees something. They wonder. And I think that was a good C. I mean, if you look at that there, that did look that way. So we get a Davis Mills sign. Davis Mills moving the change to Nico. CJ, get your ass back in here. CJ's back in. 5'11". You just want to, I mean, touchdown ends it. You want to kill some clock. Third and 23, though, you're not going to be able to do that. Little toss to Dare. Time to punt. Not the best effort by Cam Johnson. Real surprising. He punts it in the end zone. Russ right across the middle. Sutton once again. Jimmy Ward with the stick. Sutton point. Look at the time, 428. And you've already used two timeouts. That's the other thing. That timeout that D'Amico killed. Um, not good, and then had to kill another one. So you only have one timeout. So those two timeouts, we saw it at the end of the first half. You had those. Russ short, got a little fourth and one action. But those two timeouts that you uh, had at the end of the first half to get an opportunity, you don't have in the second. Moving the chains, boom, real close. Uh, but ended up getting it. Clock still going. Sean Payton. Feeling it. The old Russell Wilson probably wins this game. Play action. Will Anderson again. Got to throw that away. So go to fourth and two. 30 seconds left. CJ's like, win this for me, please. Still 30 seconds left. Fourth and two. Russ. Hell of a hell of a job right there. So we're down to 23, 22. Timeout. Broncos final timeout. So a sack would end it. Um, you had the Broncos call their timeout. Um, D'Amico had already used his timeout as well. Uh, and this is third down again, a sack ends it. So if you get pressure on Russell Wilson, he has to throw it up, uh, or he has to find a way to throw it away. If he's in the pocket, he's going to kind of be in no man's land. And that's what we're going to see here, uh, with, uh, with this, with this game clincher, uh, Jimmy Ward, you can see him right here, uh, with uh, Cashman, and you're going to see a little bit of pressure from Grenard. Grenard grabs him, near miss, got to toss it up. Jimmy Ward, been there, done that. W, let's eat it. Seven and five on to the New York Jets. Hell of a game. Probably shouldn't have been as close as it was, uh, but hey, <laughs> beggars can't be choosers. Uh, Texans matched their win total uh, last few years and there you go texans get the dub that's uh this week's highlight reaction appreciate everyone for coming through uh exclusive interview once again this thursday i'll be in new york if you're going to be in new york uh get at me um going to army navy on saturday we're going to be broadcasting from radio row out there in boston gonna go to the army navy game on um saturday and then get on a plane in the morning go to the jets game come back um and we'll have all the content uh, coming to you because uh, that's what we do. Uh, tomorrow, or today, I should say. Uh, what time is it? About No, oh, it's 5 a.m. Why am I saying tomorrow? Um, we will be doing the uh, – we normally do the end-of-season rundown um, right after Monday Night Football. Going to try to do that as planned. Uh, I got the daddy duty, though. Wifey's going out of town. She's got to handle some stuff. So. Um, I would say God willing, but baby willing, we'll get that done. But we'll get it out at least 
in the morning. Uh, subscribe, like, right along. It is the locker room. Reaction Monday begins in about five ish hours. Uh, Sports Radio 610 Odyssey app and Twitch. Uh, appreciate you for coming through. Uh, this has been this week's highlight reaction. When it comes to the Texans, we're all in this together. Appreciate you. Landlock, got the game in the headlock. Localize every time. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, top two, and we not two. Plugged in daily digital on YouTube. Oh, uh, we got taste for days. Uh -huh. Opinions to give.